Hello, my name is Barbara Seals Nevergold. I live in Buffalo, New York. I am the co-founder of a nonprofit organization, the Uncrowned Queens Institute for Research and Education on Women, Inc. This organization, which is 20 years old, focuses on identifying, researching, documenting, and preserving the biographical histories of little known, unknown, sometimes forgotten, and often well-known African-American women and men that we call community builders. These biographies are housed on our website entitled Uncrowned Community Builders. My colleague, Dr. Peggy Brooks Bertram, and I have published several volumes of these biographies, delivered countless presentations, and written numerous articles, and created many projects. During this period, we have found many early community builders who have made significant contributions, but have only a fact or two written about them. Often they were the first in their field. I've been intrigued by these individuals and wanted to provide a comprehensive biography that describes their achievements, challenges, and contributions. In the process of this research, I've often found intriguing but scant information that revealed the existence of an unknown fact. These findings have motivated me to take a closer look. In the case of East Presbyterian Church, I found a reference to the church in the history of another black church that described it as ill-fated, the ill-fated East Presbyterian Church. Well, this posed a question and got me going with, why was it ill-fated? I found the most important resource in my research in the files of St. Philip's Episcopal Church in Buffalo. St. Philip's traditionally has been identified as the third church founded by African Americans in Buffalo. The church has retained its records since the founding in 1861. The records were until recently maintained in the rector's office. They are now the University at Buffalo Archives, which has digitized them and conserved the most fragile records. Dr. Lillian S. Williams, professor at the University of Buffalo, and I were instrumental in convincing the church to allow the university to house these invaluable records. I also use materials from contemporary newspapers as a, a great assistance in the research on the East Presbyterian which became St. Philip's Episcopal Church. I chose to submit this article to New York Archives magazine because I like the fact that there is an educational component that shares the magazine articles with elementary and secondary school students by providing age-appropriate companion resources. Thank you for the opportunity to share my article with students and this short video that I hope that students will be encouraged to follow their own questions as they come across them. Thank you again for the opportunity to provide some feedback on a, a subject that has been very important to me.